what are some of the other bigger problems that you can think of offhand? For some reason, the folks out on YouTube love hearing about Prevo problems. Uh, they... <laughs> Prevos are the best buses, I think, in my opinion. As you can see, I have a pile of them back here, which they all shouldn't be here right now, but you know, it is what it is. But Prevo is definitely by far a superior coach to any other coach out there, in my personal opinion, and a lot of people's opinions. And when you're superior, people want to see you have problems. Yeah, so yeah. for some reason, a lot of you get some sort of weird joy out of seeing these guys have problems. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> I want to try to extract as much information from you as possible about some of the potential problems that these coaches can have if folks are thinking about buying one of these XL2s. What are some of the other biggest problems that you've seen in your experience? The wheels, the old bud style wheels is a huge, huge, huge problem. And I think we went over that in the previous video, but I've had several, you know, and obviously we maintain the coaches. We do probably 80,000 miles a year per coach, which is uh, quite a few miles. And we service them usually once a month when they come into the shop and, and on intervals out on the road. But we've torque in the wheels at, you know, intervals and whenever we're doing brake work and stuff like that and checking all that. And that's part of the driver's pre-trip to make sure that the, the nuts aren't loose. And I literally have had wheels that are breaking off the, the studs. So we've gone through and completely replaced it with all the new style rims just to be safe because it's not worth, uh, my livelihood or the livelihood or anyone's lives that are on the bus to have some wheels fall off and the bus hit the ground and you know who knows what could happen after that definitely respect you um, having safety as your number one yeah. priority that's one thing and uh, those are all going to be not to interrupt you but those are going to be in anywhere from your early your early 90s 80s probably i don't know much about the 80s prevos but from middle 90s for sure all the way through 2003 or four year year buses is when they were using bud style rims and for you to do that wheel upgrade i know we've talked about it in other videos what kind of dough are folks looking at to have that upgrade done to to update them to the newer style wheels yeah we were talking about that to where some some customers wanted to go to the 365s on the fronts and the tags you can still go 315s if you want to do 315s all the way around it is a much smoother ride to go 365s in my in my opinion that's why i've upgraded all of my coaches to the 365s um but i think with rubber it, like i i quoted it to somebody it was like with rubber all new rims caps studs nuts labor all the whole shebang in was like around eighteen thousand to do entire bus um, but that was all rubber and wheels rims nuts studs everything if your rubber's good you don't want to go to 365s you don't need that and you want to stay at the 315s then obviously take the price off of the rubber off and it's just the rims if you are coming up and you're going to need new tires soon it now's would, the time to do it definitely would be a good time to, to to get that and everybody that i've talked to have said that that 365 front steer upgrade really changes the bus i've been trying to give uh court and heather a pair of the 365s to throw on their bus to, to fall in love with <laughs> he, yeah, yeah, and actually they were talking about that. I've been in buses that have 365s before, and then I've been in buses that have 315s, and every bus ride's different, right? Yeah. So I didn't realize how great they were until I actually rode in one of my buses that had 315s, and then I pulled them off and put them uh, 365s on it and noticed a whole world of difference. About oh, problems, and while I've got you in front of the camera, so the DLAM issue, the, the studs, what are the other big, big issues that you've personally dealt with in Prevo ownership? Oh boy, air conditioning is, a, is generally uh, a problem in the Prevo world, I think. Uh, the, the systems work fantastic when they work, but there's a lot of upkeep and maintenance to them. Um, with the entertainers, we have over the road air. I, I don't think in motor homes there's, that's very uh, common. It's more just the driver AC systems, right? Some of the coaches do have bus air. A lot of the older double slide coaches of that era, it's not uncommon for coaches yeah. to have bus air. Some older coaches, right? So they basically, the lower portion of the, the, uh, um, the cores, the evaporative cores are, or the condenser core rather, 
get rotted out and then it gets little pinholes in it and then then it, the freon starts dumping out and then it can actually cause problems with your compressor obviously it goes from the front of the bus to the middle all the way to the back so at any point there you can you can have problems with uh losing freon which obviously is a complete nightmare if we live in arizona right you definitely do not want to live that nightmare <laughs> here in a couple months when it gets warm what here's, here's uh the design flaw in Trevo. And I don't know how they've done it in the newer ones, but this bulkhead right here of where they put the lines. Yeah. These rub, right? So all this rots away and these rub and then it puts holes there. And these are your, your Freon lines going down your compressor, right? So that's definitely, they should have, they should have made this a lot bigger and put some sort of rubber or some sort of metal housing or something around there thicker in order to uh, protect it more. As you can see, look, we've stuck some hose in there and kind of zip tied it up. That's more in like the the uh, entertainer world that we have. Coaches that have bus air. Plus, I love bus air. Like I think in a perfect world, if I, even if I had a private motorhome, I think I would order it with bus air. And um, when it works, it's it's cold, ice cold. When it doesn't work, say I owned a Prevo with bus air and the whole system just freaking blew out. Worst, worst case scenario. I bring it here to Border Coach Leasing. What would I be looking at to have that repaired? Oh boy. We've been doing a lot of, uh, on the bus air side, we're doing a lot of upgrades with brushless motors. Um, I th did I ever show you those? No. Oh, here, I'll show you. All right. These are pretty cool. See, so this is uh, our upgraded fan system. Basically, this is what they're doing in all the brand new buses, brushless. So basically, if you lose one fan on your core, um, you just drop one quarter capacity of your AC system. Nice. Where the old fans used to be down here. Uh huh. And if you lost one of those, you'd lose over half your capacity and you'd go into high pressure. Oh, okay, nice. But this is what I was saying down in the core down here. Um, it would rot out. This is a brand new one that we put in, but it would rot out down there and, and cause a lot of problems. So worst case scenario, say this had the old bus air system and then you were transferring it to this whole system. What kind of dough wise worst case scenario is someone looking at? Oh, I, I think probably with the up, updated fans and there's a lot of wiring that has to go all the way back to the, uh, the relay panel. Um, we're pro probably talking about eight to 10,000 for this upgrade as well. Kyle, what's some of your experience with the DLAM problems and, and what have you done to, to get around it? Oh, well, I think after probably the 15 year mark of a coach is when, when I'm starting to see a lot of the DLAM happening in like the early 2000s coaches um, is where it's, they're starting to pop off the sides and basically all the glue uh, adhesion is just separated from the chassis of the body and it all needs to be scraped off. and and cleaned up, primered, and re -flexed. We called the Prevo Service Center, and they said that there's a couple different ways to get these panels fixed, or this DLAM problem fixed. We asked them, and we heard right from them, for them to tail, tear all the, the panels off and put the no CM rivets in, what did they quote us? It was 35,000 on average. Um, he was gonna check his cheat sheet and get back to me on that, but 35,000 and that was without paint. So by the time you add paint um, for both sides of the coach, we're talking at least 50,000, right? Kyle owns a bunch of these Prevo XL2s. Someone was having DLAM on their Prevo XL2. Roughly, what would you charge them um, if they needed to, uh, to have this done? Like the way that you, if they needed to fix it, the way that you fix the it. Way, on your yeah, tour we've buses. been doing it. It all depends how many panels there are, but I, th I think on average it ends up being about a thousand dollars per panel, depending on the severity of it. And about how many panels are there per bus? Oh boy, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, like four per side, four to five per side. So about 10 grand. Uh... Yeah, or slightly less. I, if you ended up having to do the entire bus, then you know once we're in there you know, they're a join. So if you have to fix the left side here, you might as well pull the right side so you can fix the seam between the two panels. Two, two buses side by side, that ha one that hasn't been done and then one that has been done. So this is this is Eddie Money's old tour bus. And you mind if I put that in there? Or... Yeah, go for it. Yeah, uh, and you can see a significant deal. Now, 
you said that recently this this bus right here had yeah. that same problem same problem and as you can see uh actually kind of going down it's pushed in a tiny bit but that's to keep it nice and tight see how it's a little pushed in there but it's nice and smooth all right see each one I don't know yeah you can one. see kind of a it kind of bulges out here a little bit but it's because we didn't pull the entire panel completely off which is really the proper way to do it but that that involves removing the trim pieces up here trim pieces here taking it all off and a lot of damage can be done to the paint which you know if it's if it's your private coach then that's probably the way to do it but you know in the entertainer world we have a, a few days in between tours so we kind of have to just do what we can do to keep the buses looking as best as possible and how long do, does this repair usually hold up the way that you do it uh just kind of a quick repair um i'd have to look back in the service records of when we did this coach but i know it's been a couple of years on this one so i think you would get at least 10 years out of it I, I don't know for sure but i presume it would be at least another 10 years if you watched the previous video and you were a little bit afraid of the xl2s there is some hope that it may not cost 50000 if you have this problem. And worst case scenario, you could take it to Kyle and for about 10000 bucks, they could at least re-glue them, which will at least, you know, keep you going down the road. And it is kind of more of an aesthetic problem or is it is it pretty much an aesthetic problem or is there anything with the structure of the coach that could yeah, be Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, you know, if they get really bad... I mean, I've heard stories of panels flying off of buses and hitting vehicles, but I mean, I don't, <laughs> I've never seen it happen. So I can't say that that's what's happening, but you know, if the air's, if you're driving 60, 70 miles an hour down the freeway and there's air flopping in there and it all, all it does is tuck underneath the, the top and the bottom trim and it just pulls out. I mean, it is possible. It could be a, a safety thing. You know, that is a very good point that you bring up and, and safety has to be the number one priority when operating one of these buses not only for you and your passengers yeah. but other people on the road so i appreciate you bringing that up that it's not just an aesthetic problem it could be a safety problem as well so, folks this is another problem that we've talked about in previous videos now this is an h so a little bit different than the xl2s but this is the slide out seal and this is kind of one of the problems that scared me away from slide coaches because i think this seal alone is about five grand Kyle, you want to tell us a little bit more about what's going on here? Yeah, so I'm trying this, to find is this the, the uh, So Kyle and I inspected this bus a month or two ago, and we found a leak in this slide-out seal. So all it takes is one small leak, and that will create an air leak. Yeah, so it'll drop the auxiliary air constantly on the coach, unless if you bypass it. Let's see here. Oh, maybe that's it. No, where is it at? All it takes is one little tiny hole. And that's, you've got probably what, 30, 40 feet of, of bladder there? Oh yeah. Oh, it's pretty mangled there though. The rubber's Oh yeah, the old. rubber's all ripped. The coach is about a 2011. Now I don't know if this has ever been fixed before, but this is just one of those rubber wear pieces that you all need to be aware of when you're gonna buy a Prevo. I appreciate Kyle being so transparent about all these problems that these Prevos have because a lot of folks in the, in the Prevo groups do not wanna talk about any problems at all. And if someone tells you that they can move one of these big buses down the road without it having problems, they're not being honest. And we're all about transparency here. And I appreciate Kyle kind of, you know, falling on the sword and letting us know all, the, <laughs> all of your struggles here. So what other struggles? Tell me more about your worst points in business, uh, the, the worst things that have happened to your buses. The coronavirus. <laughs> That's a freaking true story. Really, really sad times here in the bus industry. Kyle, if these folks want some of your cool Border Coach Leasing gear, uh, what's your website where they can get that? Uh, BorderCoachLeasing.com. That's just a few of the problems that can happen. I greatly appreciate Kyle at Border Coach Leasing. Great time to support Kyle and the tour bus industry. They've got a lot of really cool, and their clothes are high quality. I wear it all the time. I love the quality nice of your hat. stuff. I like your hat. Yeah, and, and you can get one of these. Are these hats on your... Uh... No, I don't think they are, but we, we, we can take care of this that. This is kind of a VIP deal, but if, I bet you if you, uh, if you get a hold of Kyle there, he'll make sure you can get one. But great time to support a small business. Uh, greatly appreciate Kyle sharing all of this great information with you guys. Kyle has a wealth of knowledge and just really awesome of, of awesome of him to take the time to share that with all of us. So I greatly appreciate all of you that are subscribing. I hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again.